Welcome to Pocus Geek. My name is Jared Marks, and in this video I'm going to discuss how you can uh, aspirate the hematoma and provide analgesia when somebody has a shoulder dislocation. Now, if you haven't had a chance to watch the previous video on how to diagnose the shoulder dislocation, I would recommend going back and doing this. These are kind of things that you're able to do simultaneously. And just to remind you, the binary questions of this is, is there a dislocation present? And then we're going to evaluate for a proximal humerus fracture. Presumably, you've already done that when we get to the point of providing analgesia here. And so what we're going to do is discuss how we can do that on our initial evaluation of the patient. So what I like to use is a spinal needle, usually an 18 or 20 gauge. If you have a, a obese patient, you may have to use a longer spinal needle, but typically a 3 inch, 2.5 to 3 inch will work. Uh, you can judge that by you know, your exam of the patient and then also on your ultrasound. I like to get an empty sterile syringe if you're doing this by yourself um, without extra hands to help you that are also um, in sterile um, gloves and whatnot. Then I would get a control syringe if you can, but we'll go over how to do that. And then also I like to get a, a sterile syringe filled with uh, sterile lidocaine. And I usually get about 10 mLs of that. You want a sterile probe cover and obviously use sterile gloves. Why? Because we're entering to that sterile joint space and we want to uh, not infect it. So once you've obtained consent from the patient um, and or you've, and you've diagnosed the dislocation, uh, we can go about providing analgesia. Just to review real quick, we're going to place, place the uh, probe right under the scapular spine over the glenohumeral joint. And we will have already diagnosed our dislocation, but just for review, what we see here is our scapular spine and then we have our humeral head here and we can see the hemarthrosis and that's what we're going to go after in this case and so in this patient we can see a normal left shoulder or at least a non-dislocated left shoulder and then a dislocated right shoulder with hemarthrosis so what I like to do is set up with the machine in direct line of sight so that when I'm looking here down at the patient and placing my needle, then I can look straight up and see the machine within direct line of sight. Um, you do have to, it's hard because sometimes we don't like to have our patients um, sitting up when we're injecting or putting a, a needle into them. So you're going to have to make that judgment on your own. If they are um, at risk for passing out when you do that, you can have them lay on the side that is not dislocated, so their dislocated shoulders in the air, and then you can approach it from that uh, angle. That way they can be laying down. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take that needle. Here's our needle coming in here. Here's our humeral head, and this is a little distorted because it's a video with a st uh, still image, but here's our hemarthrosis. And we're going to see that that needle is in the hemarthrosis and we're going to aspirate that. And there's, you can see it getting a little smaller in that short video and then you can see it even smaller in this subsequent video. And what we can see here is that we're aspirating the hematoma and that's why I usually like a 10 cc syringe that will typically be enough uh, to get it out and so just provide a little suction on it. Um, and don't get over aggressive as it gets smaller. Um, you want to, it may uh, suck up to the joint capsule and then you end up with something that looks like this. So we got about uh, eight cc's of fluid out here. And then you'll see that he's going to take that off, leave that in the joint space. And now he's gonna, we're going to take the sterile lidocaine. And we're in that same space. I usually like to aspirate just a little bit more. You'll see a little blanch of blood come in there just to make sure I didn't lose our space. And then we'll inject that full 10 cc's. I have found that if I don't, aspirate the hematoma that it doesn't work quite as well for their pain. I think that's because it distends the joint capsule too much and by doing this um, I f have a lot more success um, and just inject that full 10 cc's. Then what you can do after after I inject it, I typically clean up everything um, and walk away and give them at least five to ten minutes. Um, that usually allows enough time for the injection to take effect and provide the analgesia I'm looking for. If you are one that likes to um, 
have them lay on the bed in a uh, prone position and hang up down their arm with some weights that's a great time to do that because you could do that too um, but then typically I just come back and reduce it with some whatever maneuver you like best and so what we see is this reduction the r red is the scapula and the blue is the humeral head and we can see that they're right up abutted to, next to each other uh, you can do a dynamic exam like I've showed you in the other video to see that the humeral head is rotating within the glenerol humeral space so just to review, if we're going to aspirate the hematoma, hematoma we're going to put the probe and uh, approach it from the posterior of the patient with the uh, probe uh, inferior to the scapular spine. We're going to aspirate the hematoma um, and then inject with lidocaine. Um, you can use bupivacaine, uh, but using lidocaine, they're less likely to have complications. Um, and then we're going to wait about 10 to 15 minutes, 5 to 10 5 to 15 is probably appropriate. It depends on what your ED is like and what you're doing. And then reduce the shoulder with any uh, of your prefer preferred techniques. I hope you find that helpful. I find that uh, an easy procedure to do, especially if you're using doing ultrasound guided procedures. And if you're not, at least try diagnosing with ultrasound first for these shoulder dislocations and then try moving to aspirating in the hematoma. I hope you find success with this. Let me know if you have any questions at POCUS geek at gmail.com or comment below.